So here's how to isolate a variable. This is a word that you're gonna hear a lot. This is a phrase you're gonna hear. Isolate means to get all alone. So for example, having x equal some number is isolating the variable. Having x equal some number means we got x all alone. We isolated the variable. I want you guys to show your work when isolating this variable. When isolating this variable. So here's how we would show our work. We want to get it down to just an x equals. We want to make it x equals. What is stopping this from being just x equal? What is stopping it, Olivia? The, the, plus two. the plus two. If somehow that plus two went away, notice how it would just be x equals? So we have to make that plus two go away. I do that by doing the opposite. What do I do, Shiley? Excellent. Because what we do to one side, we do to the other. This right here is our true fact. Negative two equals negative two. Then, here, what's positive two minus two? Positive two minus two, Sean? It's zero, it goes away. Now we're left with just our x equals. Then, what's five minus two? Chase R, what's five minus two? Five minus two is three. Exactly. I want you guys to show your work with this one. I want you guys to show your work and do this problem. What do I want at the end? I want my variable to be isolated. So I want it to be x equals. Ani, what is standing in the way of that being an x equals? Yes, the negative seven. If I make that negative seven go away, I'm just left with x equals. So how? How on earth do I make that negative seven go away? How do I make it go away, Kyle? We are going to add seven, right? Perfect. Is that it? What do I need to do, Em? Excellent. I need to do it to both sides. So we need to do that. Notice that this is our proof really quickly, that positive seven is equal to positive seven. That's our proof. Negative seven plus seven turns into zero. We are now left with X. We are now left with x equals. And then I have this, what's the answer, Em? 20. 20, exactly. This is how we show our work. This is how we isolate our variable. So what if I had a problem that looked like this? 2x equals 100. I need to get this down to an x equals something. What is in the way? of this being an x equals. What is in the way, Sean? Um, two. Yeah, that too. And we need to include that operation, just like before, just like how we included the plus, just like how we included the minus. What's the operation that's happening here? What operation is happening here, Yurin? Not subtraction. What operation's happening here, Jasmine? So multiplication, they're touching. When we do this, we do the opposite, we do the inverse. So what am I gonna be doing to each side? What am I doing to each side, Marcus? Division. So what do I do, Olivia? What do I do? You divide Perfect. I divide each side by two. Once again, this is our proof. Divide by 2 is equal to divide by 2. What is 2 divided by 2? 2 divided by 2, Joey. 1. Exactly. So I'm just left with x. I'm left with 1x, which is just x. And then, let's see. Jasmine, what is 100 divided by 2? 100 divided by 2. 50, yes, 
<laughs> so x equals 50. What about this one? What if I had this one? x divided by 4 is equal to 16. How do I get it to be x equals? How do I get it to be x equals? Shiley. Yeah, I have to deal with that divide by 4. I have to get rid of that somehow because then I'm left with x equals. How do I get rid of a divided by 4, Kyle? Perfect. So I have to do the inverse. I'm going to multiply this side by 4. Is that it? No. What do I do, Yurin? Excellent. We always have to have that proof. You see that proof right there? You always have to have that proof. So what is divided by 4 <clears throat> times 4? Divided by 4 times 4. Divided by 4 times 4, Amari. It's 1. So it just becomes 1x. And what's 16 times 4, Isis? It is 64. So that's how we do that. That is how we isolate our variables.